We're asked to calculate all of the critical points of the function, then determine if each point represents a relative maximum, relative minimum, or a saddle point. For the first step, we will determine the critical points or critical numbers by determining where the first order partial derivatives are equal to zero or undefined, and then step two will perform the second partials test. Let's begin by determining all the partial derivatives that we need for step one and step two. Let's first determine the partial of f with respect to x, which means we differentiate f of x comma y with respect to x, treating y as a constant. Because we're differentiating with respect to x, treating y as a constant, it might be helpful to write this last term as six divided by y times x to the power of negative one. And now differentiating with respect to x, treating y as a constant, we have the partial of f with respect to x is equal to six x to the fifth plus zero. And then to differentiate six divided by x, y with respect to x, we multiply by negative one and then subtract one from the exponent on x, which gives us negative six divided by y times x to the power of negative two, or minus six divided by x squared y. Remember, if we have x to the power of negative two, we move it down to the denominator, it changes the sign of the exponent. And now let's find the partial of f with respect to y. So now we differentiate f of x comma y with respect to y, treating x as a constant. And therefore, it might be helpful to rewrite the third term as plus six divided by x, y to the power of negative one. Differentiate with respect to y, the derivative of x to the sixth is zero, plus six y to the fifth, giving us six y to the fifth. And then differentiating six divided by x, y to the power of negative one with respect to y, we multiply by negative one, and then subtract one on the exponent of y, which gives us negative six divided by x, y to the power of negative two, or simplifying negative six divided by x, y squared. Let's also find the second order partials that we need to perform the second partials test. Let's find the second order partial with respect to x, which means we differentiate the first order partial with respect to x with respect to x again. So again, it might be helpful to write this second term as minus six divided by y times x to the power of negative two. Differentiate with respect to x, we have 30 x to the fourth. And then for the second term, we multiply by negative two, which gives us plus two times six divided by y, x to the power of negative three. Two times six is 12, so we have plus 12 divided by x cubed y. And now let's find the second order mixed partial, the partial of f with respect to x, then with respect to y. To find this partial derivative, it'll be helpful to write the second term of the first order partial with respect to x as negative six divided by x squared y to the power of negative one. Differentiate with respect to y, we multiply by negative one, which becomes plus six divided by x squared times y to the power of negative two, giving us six divided by x squared y squared. And then we also have to find the second order partial with respect to y, which means we differentiate the first order partial with respect to y with respect to y again. So looking at the second term, we can think of this as minus six divided by x y to the power of negative two. Differentiate with respect to y, we have 30 y to the fourth. And then for the second term, we multiply by negative two, which gives us positive two times six, which would be 12 divided by x times y to the power of negative three, giving us plus 12 divided by x y cubed. Now that we have all the partial derivatives that we need, the next step is to find the critical numbers, which are the x and y values where the first order partials are both equal to zero. Let's work on this on the next slide. So we need to solve the system of equations six x to the fifth minus six divided by x squared y equals zero and six y to the fifth minus six divided by x y squared equals zero. Let's begin by clearing the fractions from both equations. 
For the first equation, we'll multiply both sides of the equation by x squared y. Which gives us 6x to the seventh y minus 6 equals 0. Let's go ahead and solve this equation for x to the seventh y. So let's go ahead and add 6 to both sides and then divide both sides by 6. Which gives us x to the seventh y is equal to 1. And now let's go to the second equation and multiply both sides of the equation by xy squared. Simplifying, we have 6xy to the seventh minus 6 equals 0. Let's go ahead and solve this equation for x, y to the 7th. So let's add 6 to both sides. Divide both sides by 6, which gives us x, y to the 7th equals 1. So we are still trying to solve the system of equations, where now the two equations are x to the 7th, y equals 1, and x, y to the 7th equals 1. But we can probably stop here and solve this by inspection, where both equations are true when x equals 1 and y equals 1. So one critical point would be 1 comma 1 comma, the z coordinate would be f of 1 comma 1. And both equations are also true when both x and y are negative 1. And therefore the second critical point is negative 1 comma negative 1 comma f of negative 1 comma negative 1. Let's go ahead and find the function values or z coordinates on the next slide. I've already set this up to save some time. Notice how both f of one comma one and f of negative one comma negative one are both equal to eight. Remember, we do use the original function to find these z coordinates. So the two critical points are one comma one comma eight, as well as negative one comma negative one comma eight. The next step is to perform the second partials test, which we will do on the next slide. Now I've already set a lot of this up to save some time. I've copied the second order partials that we need in the upper right hand corner to find d at the point 1 comma 1 comma 8. We evaluate the second order partials from the formula for d where x and y are both positive 1 and simplifying we get d equals 1728. Next we find d for the point negative 1 comma negative 1 comma 8 so we determine d when x is equal to negative 1 and y is equal to negative 1, which also gives us 1,728. So notice that both critical points, d is greater than 0 or positive. The next step is to find the sine of the second order partial with respect to x at 1, 1 and negative 1, negative 1. And again, notice both are also positive or greater than 0. So looking at our notes, because d is greater than 0, and the second order partial with respect to x is also greater than zero, we have relative minimums at both critical points. And let's verify this graphically. So here we see the graph of the surface. Notice how we have one low point here. If we keep rotating the surface, we have another low point on the other side, which we see here. So this graph does verify that we have two relative minimums. Let's go ahead and summarize our findings. Again, we have a relative minimum at 1, 1, 8, as well as negative 1, 1, 8. Another way to express this information would be to say the given function has a relative minimum of the z value or function value of 8 at the locations of 1, 1, and negative one comma negative one. I hope you found this helpful.